What if I tell you that you can change your driving style from a smooth sedan to an SUV whenever you want it? Yes, I am talking about air suspensions which can help you to achieve the same. So what exactly is the air suspension? In simple terms, it's a type of suspension that uses air spring instead of traditional coil spring. It helps you to adjust the ride height of your vehicle whenever you want it according to your driving conditions. For example, this is your car and you are driving on highway. So for increasing the fuel efficiency of your vehicle, you can reduce the ride height of your vehicle which will help you to reduce the drag. And indirectly, the fuel efficiency of your vehicle will increase. Now suppose you want to go off-road in the same car. So what you can do is, you can increase the ride height of a vehicle according to the off-roading condition. These ride height adjustments like increase and decrease in ride height is only possible when you are using air suspensions in your car. So here we are having a traditional coilover which have a coil spring and damper. So just replace the coil spring with a bellow filled with air and you will get your air suspension. But wait, do you think it's that easy? No actually. Air suspension involves addition of multiple components and not just replacing the coil spring with the bellow filled with air. So let's understand each components one by one. Number one is the air compressor. The role of the air compressor is simple. It draws in the outside air and compresses that air to a specified pressure level. Air compressor can be located in the engine bay, near the rear axle or inside the tire well or trunk of the vehicle. From the compressor, the air is directed into reservoir or the air tank. This reservoir acts as a storage unit ensuring the instant supply of compressed air. It's like having a reserve of energy which can be released whenever need arises. The next component is the control valve. From reservoir, the air flows into the control valve. This control valve helps in regulating the airflow by controlling the amount of air that needs to be sent to each air spring. But how does this system know when and how much to adjust? That's where height sensor comes in. These sensors constantly measure the distance between the vehicle chassis and the ground. The data gathered by this sensor is then sent to ECM or electronic control module. This ECM is like the brain of all operation. It processes the data from the height sensors and decides whether to add or release air from the air spring. Now the main component in this complete assembly is the air spring or air bellow. These are the air bags which can inflate or deflate according to the ride height required or according to the increase and decrease in load on the vehicle. There are different kinds of air spring. The most common ones are rolling lobe and convoluted air springs. The design of the rolling lobe is like a cylindrical shaped rubber membrane which folds inwards and outwards. This design allows changes in volume of air spring adjusting the ride height and providing the cushioning effects. Convoluted air spring, also known as the bellow style air spring, they have flexible rubber sleeve with folds. This bellow design allows expansion and contraction of the air spring. Rolling lobe air springs can handle variety of load, making them suitable for both light and heavy duty applications. On the other hand, convoluted air springs are mostly used for the passenger cars and light truck. Also, rolling lobe air spring offers the high degree of flexibility and wide range of motion as compared to the convoluted air spring. Now the last component in this complete assembly is the dampers or the shock absorber. While the air spring handles the heavy lifting, dampers ensure the smooth and controlled ride. It's the collaboration of air springs and the dampers which provides you a comfortable ride without compromising the stability. In a nutshell we can say, air from the air compressor gets stored in the air reservoir. Now according to the data gathered by the height sensor and driver input, ECM sends signals to the control valve which adds or releases air from the air spring for maintaining a particular ride height. Now there is an important factor that needs to be considered in air spring, that is the spring rate. When air pressure inside the air spring increases, it leads to the increase in ride rate of vehicle and higher pressure inside the air spring makes the air spring to resist compression more, leading to the increase in spring rate. Similarly, on decreasing the air pressure, the ride rate decreases, which makes the air spring to compress more easily, which leads to reduce in spring rate. Now let's see some advantages and disadvantages of air suspensions. Number one, according to the road condition, you can adjust the ride height of vehicle. As going on a highway, you can reduce the ride height of vehicle and increase the fuel efficiency of vehicle if your car is having an air suspension. Also, air suspension can help you to maintain a particular ride height according to the road irregularities because it constantly takes data from the height sensor and adjusts the ride height according to that. There are some disadvantages in the air suspension as well. Number one is the cost and the complex design. You can see we are having multiple components in the air suspension which leads to the increase in cost and also the assembly is complex. Also in this design we can have air leaks which can lead to the suspension failure. Also maintenance and repairing cost for this suspension is very high as compared to traditional suspension. So this is all about air suspension this much for this video. Thanks for watching. If you find the video useful do like it, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you want to learn about vehicle dynamics and automobile you can check my blogs on that. The link is in the description. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring.